Hello everyone, this is Dave Collin from Broken Games talking a little lower uh, because it's one of those videos again where I have to lower my voice or else I am going to wake everyone in my house up. So, uh, today uh, we're talking about something a little bit different. It's uh, a little bit different. No, it's not. Uh, we're talking about more games of the past. I'm starting to wrap this series up. Um, but, uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, the game I'm gonna be reviewing today is Metal Gear Sol or Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, rather. Uh, but, however, I will, um, be talking about The Last of Us after this. Um, if there are any other games you guys want me to talk about, uh, that's fine. Um, you know, just put your comments down below. If I've played them, I will get to them, um, as soon as I can. You know, obviously, I'd have to play them a little more in-depth, you know, so don't send me something like, uh, well, what's a game I haven't played that much? Um, Mario and Luigi Dream Team. You know, I've played through that quite a bit. Um, not quite a bit. I've played about four hours of it, and I stopped there, you know? Preferably, it has to be something I might have beaten or even just got towards the end of, um, or fairly far ahead in, to be able to <laughs> make a sound opinion on it. Because, like I said, a game's... Games have done that to me millions of times before, where um, yeah, I feel like it's this way, it's going to be this way throughout the whole game, but then it changes towards the end. Um, and it's happened before tons and tons of times. And I guess a segue into that is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. What a weird development process on this game, I have to tell you guys. Um... Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, if you guys didn't know, in its early stages, was actually supposed to be called Metal Gear Solid Rising. Um, and it was supposed to tell the story of Raiden, uh, a character well-known in the Metal Gear universe, um, uh, who actually changed his body into a cyborg between the years of 2009 and 2014, at some point during those years, so that he could um, fight to protect what he believed in, and things like that. And he was an interesting character because, you know, a lot of people hated him in Metal Gear Solid 2. He was the main star of Metal Gear Solid 2, but I actually really liked uh, Raiden as a character. I felt he was a very believable character, and I really enjoyed what he brought to the table in terms of just, you know, just in terms of a character in the Metal Gear series. He brought a whole new understanding because the cool thing about Raiden was is that Snake was in the first Metal Gear Solid game, always very, very wise and intelligent, though he did learn some stuff towards the end of the game. Um, but that's not the main point, is that Raiden was so brand new at what he was doing, at secret agent stuff, that he just felt like he was a mentor, or Snake was more like a mentor to him. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go play Metal Gear Solid 2. Play the whole Metal Gear series, honestly. I, you know... A side note is that I am huge into Metal Gear Solid. I have played almost every single game. I have not touched the Acid series, which is not even canon to the game series itself. But, um, <coughs> excuse me. But I am huge into Metal Gear. Uh, you know, I'm, I can't wait for Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. And although that game kind of does scream crash grab, cash, crash grab, yes, we're getting Crash Bandicoot in on this, no. Um, even though the game does kind of scream cash grab, I still just want to play it so bad. I want to know what happens in this story, uh, what happens next. And, you know, I pre-ordered it on PlayStation 4 just so I have something to play on that damn thing. But, you know, what's stopping me from getting it on PS3 and maybe even the Xbox? Because I want to try the Xbox exclusive content on that game. I want to test the frame rates. I want to play this game. That's how dedicated I am to Metal Gear. Um, so much dedicated that my favorite game of all time is, well, one of my favorites is that Metal Gear Solid 3 is one of my favorite games. And I bought and I bought and I've bought Metal Gear Solid 3 Substance on the PlayStation 2. I have the HD collection version on the PS3 and the Vita, and I have Metal Gear Solid 3D Snake Eater on the 3DS. And, you know, if I were to buy the 360 HD remake and the, the original Xbox version of Metal Gear Solid 3, I probably would. Don't even tempt me. But, 
you know, that, I guess, segueing into Metal Gear Rising is that in its early stages, it was supposed to tell the story of uh, what happened to Ryan between Metal Gear Solid 2 and Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, which is why I was really disappointed when I heard that it was silently canned, um, and that Kojima Productions was pretty much releasing their grasp on the game. There was uh, hope for this game after all, though, when Platinum took the, the stage with it. And even then, I was extremely nervous about this game, because I love Platinum games to death. I'll be the first to admit, I'm probably one of the biggest fans of Platinum. Because I love the wonderful 101, I love Bayonetta, I loved uh, the one game they got, I got it for free on PlayStation Plus, and I loved that. I think it was called Vanquish. Vanquish, that's what it was. I'm looking forward to Bayonetta 2 a lot. So, fundamentally, I knew this game was going to be really, really fun. I just didn't know if the story was going to hold up, because Platinum, while they make really, really good gameplay, and they make it so smooth and crisp and fun to play... Um, their stories aren't usually the best, and their games are almost notoriously short. Um, save for maybe The Wonderful 101 and kind of Bayonetta, um, but most of their games are extremely short. They, you know, Bayonetta took me less than five hours to beat, and, you know, th it has replay value on its side, but really not much more than that <coughs> was added to the story of the game. Which I actually, one of the Platinum games I found very interesting in its story, uh, but, you know, The Wonderful 101 has an exception to that rule, I guess. It, it, I haven't beaten it yet, but i played a good amount through. It's almost, apparently, according to some people, it's like 7 to 9 hours long, which is a pretty good length, if uh, you ask me. So, you know, my hopes were high for this. The first trailer came out of it, and I was like, what the hell did you guys do? Um, I was hoping for something a little bit different than what we got with the, this game at first. You know, I was like, they're not telling the story of Raiden anymore. Uh, they're actually telling a story of Raiden after the events of Metal Gear Solid 4. Which I think could be interesting, but Metal Gear Solid 4, I think the way it ended was it didn't really need to continue on into the 2019 or 2020 or something like that. It didn't need to be told like that. Um, and I understand that, you know, a lot of people, like, probably say if Platinum did the whole rising story of how Raiden got his, um, got his origin, there probably wouldn't be much of a story to tell. And in a way, you're right. But then, you know, I look at it, and I'm like, well the game looks almost fundamentally different than what they showed off. Because if you didn't watch the trailers at first, Rising looked like a totally different game. Um, you know, it, it, ha it ran off the Metal Gear Solid 4 engine, but also had this cool dynamic where you could cut everything in your path. Uh, that was still there to an extent. Um, but the whole kind of engine was sort of changed, and it looked... It looked a lot like it runs off of Bayonetta's engine, and, uh, you know, that wasn't disappointing to me, because, you know, I think Bayonetta's a great-looking game, but I expected more out of Kojima. Uh, not that graphics are everything, because the trailer even disappointed me in its in the trailer itself. What it showed off about the story was just ridiculous to me. It looked too over-the-top, and, um, you know, I was... Very, very disappointed, and at the end of the trailer, Jack's like, oh, it looks like it's time for Jack to let her rip, and I'm like, what the f... You know what I mean? I, I was confused, you know, I and I probably wasn't the only one... I know I wasn't the only one who spoke out about this. Um, a lot of fans voiced their concerns about this game, and, uh, you know, I was still like, alright, it's going to be fun, though, Right? And, uh, surely enough, the game came out, I picked it up day one. Uh, I actually have an art book, you might be able to see it on the, the little, uh, stand up there, but... I got this game day one, and what you're seeing in the footage is not going to be PlayStation 3 footage, because I really have no reason to go back to the PS3 version. Uh, it runs at 30 frames per second, it's locked there. Um, it actually does run at slower frames at some points, you have no idea, um, but, uh, you know, um, 
uh, what you're seeing is actually the PC version, which was released for less than $60, which is what I got this for, and comes with every single bit of DLC that was released with this game. And, um, so that also runs at a higher frame rate, looks better generally. Uh, I really do like the PC version if you guys gonna go get it. Platinum actually did, or whoever made the PC version of it, did a really good job converting everything over. Um, it's definitely a worthy, uh, successor to the the console versions, but, uh, this game in general, uh, my short and sweet opinion about it is, it's really good. <laughs> I can't really say much more than that. Um, for about half the game, I think the story actually tells a pretty good story, um, but the other half is kind of ridiculous over the top and doesn't make much sense character-wise. Um, and you know, in a way, it doesn't feel very much Metal Gear. Um, and, you know, I'm going to say this right now, because I know this might be a question on a lot of people's minds who have maybe not know, don't know much about this game, is that it's really short. It is like four hours long, and that's not very long at all, um, especially for a Metal Gear game. Metal Gear games are, they tend to last for the long haul. Um, Metal Gear Solid 1, even, is about like eight or nine hours long. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 is about nine to eleven hours long. Metal Gear Solid 3 is almost, like, 13 hours long. And Metal Gear Solid 4 is 15 hours long. You know what I mean? Or even Peace Walker, which can take up to 27 hours to beat or something like that. <clears throat> That's about how much time I clocked in. I don't think I did everything there was to do in the game. So this... <sighs> it feels a little short, you know? <clears throat> uh, I wish it could have been a little longer. I wish they could have uh, tied in a couple more plot points, but... You know, and in a lot of ways, you know, a lot of people will say, well, wh then it'll make it repetitive, you know, they'll run out of ideas, they'll start, you know, grasping for ideas. Guys, I just think that this game was pretty rushed out, to be honest with you, uh, and that's not to say that's a bad thing, you know, it's still a really fun four hours to play through, but... You know, I, I feel like Platinum, they do so many projects at once. They had this in development, they had, uh, and they had the wonderful 101 in development. Bayonetta 2, by that point, was probably in development, seeing how, um, Nintendo had just announced the, uh, Bayonetta 2 at that point. It's like, when do you guys stop? Uh, so, with that said, this game probably had a year and a half, maybe two years, that's pushing it, though, in development, and that's probably why it doesn't have that much content. Um, because it, it has the replayability of Bayonetta on its side, but, um, you know, overall, it's, it's really short. Um, now, with that said, uh, I guess I should talk about the story. The story takes place in, I want to say Africa, uh, I don't exactly remember. The first part of the story takes place, place in Africa, where uh, it's explained that Raiden actually um, joins up with an organization, uh, a privatized military um, faction, that uh, I think is under the American Associates, and... I don't want to spoil too much for Metal Gear Solid 4, because I think, once again, everyone should play this series, and if you're not, you know, well-versed in Metal Gear, this does take place after 4, but if you don't want spoilers, I would recommend clicking off for a few seconds, I'll just be quick about it. Uh, at the end of Metal Gear Solid 4, they shut down the huge uh, faction that took over the world, pretty much. Okay, bam. Spoilers done. So this actually has a new race of cyborgs coming in to take over the world rather than what was there before. Um, and, you know, the world is pretty much, the war economy and everything is run off of a huge cyborg reign. So everyone in the world is pretty much going into the cyborg realm of it. And I thought to myself when I first saw that, I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I never thought of that before. And it makes sense, because cyborgs are powerful, and, you know, if your arm gets cut off as a cyborg, it just gets replaced, because it's a, uh, it's a part. You can get it somewhere. Um, and with that said, the story even goes a, f a step further in this, and talks about, well, what's right with terrorism? You know what I mean? You know, a lot of, you know, Raiden explains that, I wanna, I wanna kill these people, I wanna kill my, the bad guys. 
because they're doing what's wrong. But then the, the, the terrorist guy, the, the main villain of this game, I think Sundowner is his name, he talks about, well, then what's truly right? You know, these people don't have a choice. They have to bring home, they have to bring home uh, bread on the table. So then the only thing they're good at is fighting. Or, or some of these people come from poor countries. It, like, it goes into that, that really awesome... I, I love that. It, it, it creates controversy in the story, which is something that I always thought Metal Gear was extremely good at, especially Metal Gear Solid 3. What makes a soldier? What, what qualifies as betrayal? Um, you know... It, it, we're all soldiers, In a soldier is always a playing piece to the war they're in. This goes into something like that. It goes into, you know, killing doesn't does it really make you feel good, Raiden. Do you, are you feeling good for the right reasons? Are you feeling good because you're stopping the enemy? Or do you just do it because you like it, because you're Jack the Ripper? Things like this go a long way in the story, which is why it's almost instantly ruined through halfway through the game where Raiden basically takes a turn for the worse and says, yeah, I like killing. Deal with it. Blah, I'm going to go monster and kill a bunch of stuff. It's like, why? You know, I... Very, very big disappointment with the story. Um, and even then, the, the ending is very sappy. and You know, it's things like that which... I feel like the story could have been longer. I feel like seven hours probably would have been a good length for this game to flesh out its characters and story. Um, and even then, you know, if they wanted to go the extra step and actually include a lot of the villains into the story and make them feel like they're a real part of everything, yeah, that would be great because I, I liked Monsoon as a character, but he didn't have much going for him in terms of the character himself. Uh... So, you know, I, I I like the story of this game. I like, um, you know, I like it for the most part. It actually, at the end, leaves room so that there could be a sequel to this game because um, not everything is really resolved at the end of it. Um, but, you know, at the same time, there are some weird parts of the story, what the enemies have been doing the whole time. You know, it's goofy what they're doing in a way, and the way they present it in the game is very goofy. But, uh, you know, Kojima's always have a, had a way of making a goofy thing seem serious, and he does that through codec calls and cutscenes and cool stuff like that, and dialogue that flesh out characters. This game doesn't do that. It, it just says, here it is, here we go, this is what you gotta do. And, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say it's not a fun game, like I said, it's, it's an awesome game, but overall, it's, it's a little... It's a little rushed, I guess you could say. Uh, but the gameplay in this game is where this game really does shine, is that it's pretty much Bayonetta with swords, is the best I could say. Um, imagine Bayonetta slashing, doing stuff like that. There's cool combos you can pull off as Raiden. There's actually a spice, a, a little um, dab of stealth in this game, which I knew it wasn't really going to be too much stealth, because look at Raiden. He's freaking huge. He's bulky. He's not built for a stealth game. So, I feel like having too much stealth in this game probably would have ruined a lot of what made this game, makes this game so special. Because there's so much you can do in the game that expose enemy weak points, so you can actually um, hold your sword and go into like a slow motion and cut arms off if they're weak enough, if you have an exposed weak point of the enemy. And uh, that adds an interesting dynamic to the game. And these are the boss fights as well, because... Uh, everything can be slashed open and stuff, and, you know, you can interact with environments to make things fall on enemies, or, you know, and it's actually just really cool. I, I really enjoy that half of the spectrum of this game. It makes uh, going back to it really, really fun. Um, you know, even by the cover of the game, you can see Raiden's uh, slashing through something. Um, and... I can't really think of much else to say because it is Bayonetta in a nutshell. I gotta say they did platforming better in this game too. Uh, rather than having to press the, the jump button to get on top of a ledge, uh, Raiden can actually just run up, If as long as you're running of course, he can just run up the wall and do like a ninja spire jump thing. They um, go into that in detail uh, in the game. Uh, Graphics-wise, I think it's a good-looking game once again, but... Um, 
you know, I, I feel like Metal Gear Solid 4 still looks amazing today. Uh, I couldn't imagine what it looked like it, if it had this plastered onto it. I think it would have looked incredible, but you can't win every time. Uh, but the music in this game is actually where this game shines a lot. Uh, the music is amazing. I love it to death. Uh, it's a really, really fun soundtrack to listen to. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's a good metal soundtrack, definitely. But, uh, uh, the gameplay, of course, I mean, I don't want to keep going back to it because I feel like you really just have to play it yourself to know what I'm talking about. But, uh, I think the only real problem I had with the gameplay is the parry system. In Bayonetta, there, was a, in, there wasn't really a parry system in Bayonetta. You just, because you weren't really armed with anything but guns. Uh, but in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, you have a sword. You can you should be able to block attacks. Uh, you know, like, Bayonetta has her fists like this, but Raiden, he has a freaking sword, you know what I mean? This is my keyblade. But yeah, he has a sword, he can attack things with it. You know what I mean? But, put that over there. Um, doesn't make much sense to me, uh, personally. And the parry system... You know, he blocks stuff with the sword, but you have to press the X button or the square button or, you know, that kind of thing for it to work. And I feel like it should have been its own separate button. Either that or Raiden had some kind of dodge ability uh, to replace the parry in some way or have both of them kind of coincide. You can use one or the other and each one had its own sort of, you know, potential, but... <coughs> Even then, I don't know. It felt extremely lazy at points uh, that they didn't even do that. It, it felt like they were just trying to make the game harder by doing it. Uh, with that said, though, the gameplay is really fun. The boss fights are probably the best part about this game because they're just so over the top. And they're fun, though, because they have this cool music playing in the background. Raiden's just a badass while doing it. Uh, and that's, that's the best part about this game, easily. The bosses. The bosses are the best part. Uh, but I think that's all I really have to say about this game. Uh, other than that, yeah, I, I recommend picking this game up if you're uh, not even just a Metal Gear fan. Just pick it up if you like Bayonetta-type games, you know, very fast-paced, over-the-top games. You might not like the story this game has to provide, and even some characters you're not really going to know. They're going to make reference to characters, I, I should say. There's only one other main series character of the Metal Gear series that comes back into this game. Um, but they'll make references to other characters that you won't understand if you haven't played them. But other than that, it pretty much stands in its own continuity. Um, I would like to see a sequel to this game, and I would love to see Platinum come back to do it. Uh, maybe on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. I, either way, I think they should come back to this and revisit this idea because they could do more with the story of this game and flesh out the characters uh, that... Because I actually do like the characters in this game. A lot of uh, people, contrary to popular belief, you know, don't like the characters in this game. I actually like them a lot. Um, Sev is a really cool character. Kev, Sev. Been a while. Uh, I can't remember names very well. Kev is a cool character. I really liked him. Doctor, I thought, was pretty cool. Um, Boris, I thought he was extremely silly, but I thought that was what made him so cool. Um, you know, I would like to see a more fleshed out story. I would like to see a longer game. I would like to see seven to nine hours, at least for the next game. Because, by God, this game is so short. It is so short. You know, it'll say that there's, what, six or seven missions in the game, and those count as chapters, but some of them are so short, it doesn't even, like, matter what you say. They are short. Uh, there's one where you're going through the streets of Colorado, okay, that's a pretty decently long level, but how about after that, you're going through the build office building, okay, that's a medium-sized level. Then you're done the boss, guess what you have to do? You're outside the building again, you have to just go backwards a little bit, just a little ways through, and that's the chapter. That's the end of the chapter right there. Okay, so then what's the next chapter? It's a boss fight. Oh, it's over. What's the next chapter? Oh, it's just a small little corridor to the last boss fight. It's like, you know, some chapters are extremely short. I feel like it could have been flushed out a bit more. Um, 
And that's not to say I want padding in the game. I just want a longer game in general. I think there's plenty of things you could have innovated with, you know. Um, I think Metal Gear Solid series games in the past have done it. And maybe a lot of people make the argument that it doesn't work the same for a, a fast-paced game. But I, I beg to differ. Bayonetta's done it. So did the Wonderful 101. They just didn't have the time to do it. And, uh, yeah. With that said, uh, I recommend picking up the PC version of this game if you haven't already. If you don't have a gaming PC powerful enough to play, Metal Gear Rising Revenge, I just recommend picking up the console version, um, obviously. Uh, but just to say the frames will drop, you won't be getting all the DLC missions and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's awesome. It's a great game. I recommend picking it up. Add it to your Metal Gear Solid collection if you haven't already. So anyway, guys, this is uh, Dave Collins from Broken Games, and I'll catch you later.